Now that our database server's ready, we need to install our first SCOM management server, the brains of operations manager, if you like. So in preparation, I've already gone ahead and I've copied the contents of our SCOM 2016 ISO to my software folder. So let's go and take a look at that. All right, now, before we actually do get in and have a look at the contents of this folder, if we're working in a lockdown environment, we might need to open up some ports. So in my scripts folder, here's a script for opening up all the ports required for our management server. So in this case, we can open up ports 5723, 5724, and the web ports if we're installing the web console. And you'll see I've also thrown in ping and a couple of WMI and remote event log ports as well. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this into a Windows PowerShell console. Let's do that. All right, there you go, took a couple of seconds. And of course, now all of these ports are gonna be open. But again, if your environment differs from mine and you've disabled the Windows firewall by group policy or something, then obviously this step isn't required for you. Now, the other really important step we need to perform is to add our action account and our DAS accounts that we created in a previous video to the local administrators group on this server and on any other servers that we want to make SCOM management servers. Now, we can do it the manual way or the scripted way. So let's have a look at both. So let's go and open up Server Manager. And let's go to Tools. And we'll open Computer Management. Then we'll expand Local Users and Groups. We'll choose Groups. Let's open up the Administrators group. And down here we'll click Add. I'm gonna type in the name of my group, which is a SCOM Administrators group. Remember, we added them both to that group. And click OK. And that's done. Alternatively, let's just close this, we'll cancel. I'll leave that open for now. We'll go back to our Scripts folder. And which script, here we go, add SCOM accounts to local administrators groups. Let's have a look at that. Just a couple of lines of script, pretty simple. Let's just copy that into our PowerShell prompt. Okay, that's done. And let's go back to our computer management console. There it is. And in there you're gonna see SCOM administrators. All right, how simple is that? So you can do it either way, you can do it manually or you can use a script. Again, I like PowerShell, that's just my opinion, less room for error. Okay, so let's go back to our installation of SCOM. And, well, we're gonna start our installation of SCOM. Let's just close some of these windows. And we'll locate a folder and we'll run setup. But you are gonna find we are gonna run into a brick wall because SCOM 2016, just like the versions before, it does have some prerequisites and those prerequisites are gonna differ upon the options we choose in our installation. So let's click install anyway. And obviously that's gonna start our setup. And on the first screen, once that appears, it's gonna ask us what features we want. So I'm gonna choose the first three features to install a management server, the operations console and a web console as well. Now choosing this web console is of course going to require us to have a good many of the IIS components installed as well. So we're gonna choose these three. We'll leave reporting server for a later video. We'll click next. I'm gonna leave the default path here for the installation. That's fine, we'll click next. And the setup wizard is obviously gonna do some prerequisite checking and you can see that we haven't obviously got everything we need. First of all, we don't have the report viewer controls and look, there's a lot of IIS stuff here that we don't have as well. Now, thankfully, all of these requirements I do have available in my software folder, and the rest are features we can install from within Windows Server. So, let's go and take a look. So, we'll go back to our folder here, and let's just go up to the software directory and the patches and tools folder. So, firstly, we need to install the report viewer, but this has its own prerequisite of this CLR types for SQL Server. So, if we run this, in fact, you'll actually see that it requires this file. So let's just cancel this or click OK and finish. And we will run the SQL system CLR types file. We'll click next. We'll accept that, next, next, install. 
And there you go, it's pretty quick. Of course, we can do this from the command line if we like, and we can do that in a moment. And let's run the report viewer. Next, we'll accept the license terms and install. And that's also done. All right, so let's move on to the next part, which is the IIS features that SCOM requires when we choose to install the web console. So let's go and open up Server Manager again. And we're gonna choose Add Roles and Features. Let's click Next here. We'll click Next again, we'll click Next again. Now down the bottom here, we'll choose Web Server. Obviously it's gonna need its own features, so we'll click Add. And we'll click Next again. We'll go Next again. And one more time. And we'll need to select the role services that the SCOM installer was complaining about. So we're gonna to need to add in, or at least make sure that the following roles are checked. So we'll need the default document, directory browsing, HTTP errors, static content, under health and diagnostics, HTTP logging needs to be checked, and request monitor, so let's check that. Let's just scroll down. Under performance, static content compression. Under security, we need request filtering and Windows authentication, so let's check that one. We'll expand application development. And here, we'll need to add in .NET 3.5 extensibility, and that's gonna add these other features as well. So it's gonna click a couple of other things for us. And we'll need 4.6. And we'll also need ASP.NET 3.5, we'll add again, and 4.6. And we'll need to make sure these ISAPI extensions and filters are checked as well. Now, scroll down a little bit further under the Management Tools section. We'll want the IIS console. And under IIS 6 compatibility, we'll need to ensure that we've got the IIS 6 MetaBase compatibility checked as well. As you can see, that's a lot of stuff we need, some of which was already checked, but a lot of it wasn't. So this is why I like to script things, because it's really easy to run through that list and get stuff wrong. So like with my previous videos, let's do this from PowerShell. So I'm gonna cancel this. Where I've got two scripts here, one for installing the prerequisite software when you're installing a management server that you want to install a web console on, and then one without a web console. So the only difference between these two is all that IIS stuff. All right, now, so let's look at the top one, obviously, because we are installing a web console. So let's open that up. And you can see here, the first thing it's going to do is install the SQL file. It's going to install the report viewer. It's then going to install .NET Framework version five. And there's all that content that we're going to install. So if you do get stuck, this is the list you need to use for the prerequisites for Windows 2016. Now, if you're installing on Windows 2012 server though, some of these features have different names. So for example, net HTTP activation is called AS HTTP activation in server 2012. And some of these things are new, like anything with the number 45 in it. So the second role here, and obviously the activation one at the top. All right. So let's run this script instead because it's much more fun to watch things just work hands off. And we will run that file. All right, so I'm gonna run our 04 prerequisites for a management server with the web console. So let's hit enter. You can see it's installing the SQL file, then the report viewer. And now it's moving on to the other features and roles. Now, this is gonna take a few minutes to run, so I'll save you the pain. Let's just pause the video here and we'll come back once this script is completed. Okay, we're back. Obviously our script is now run, all these things are now installed. So let's go back to our installer. It should be around here somewhere, there it is. And we'll click verify prerequisites again. Now this time we can see most of them have disappeared, but we do have these two critical ones here. They'll go after we restart this server. In fact, it still does tell us there is a restart that's pending anyway. So I'm gonna pause the video, reboot this server, and we'll be back in just a minute. All right, we're back. I've rebooted this server. So let's go and run that setup again. That is in our software folder. There we go. 
And let's click install. I'm going to go to the first three options exactly like we did before. We'll click next. We're going to leave the default paths. And this time you can see that we're now able to proceed all of our prerequisites have passed. So let's click next. And the first option we're going to get here is to create the first management server in a new management group. So we will need to give this management group a name, but get it right because you can't back out later if you do change your mind. So I'm going to call mine column MG for management group. That's original. And let's click next. We'll accept the license terms. We'll click next. Okay, now the next two screens is where we're going to have to define our databases. And this setup wizard will attempt to communicate with our database server, which is obviously why we built that first in a previous video. So here we're concerned with the operational database. So since we're using a default instance of SQL, we just simply need to enter in our SQL server name. And that was, if I get this right, cull SQL01, I think. And if we hit tab, then that's going to force this wizard to see if it can contact that SQL server. If it does, then these other fields will open up and become editable. If not, you're going to see an error. It's that simple. So as you can see, my SQL server is contactable on the default port of 1433. It is going to create a database with the name of Operations Manager. It's going to be one gig in size, which we can change later on, but for now that's fine. And the data files and log files are going to default to these locations. Now, Obviously this is a lab, so it's not really making any difference to me if all of these are on the same disk. In production, you most likely want to, and probably do already separate these things out for better performance. Again, this is a lab, so the defaults are fine. So I'm going to click next. And here we're going to have to do exactly the same thing for our data warehouse server. So I'm going to enter in our server name, the same one as before. If I can spell it, called SQL01. And again, I'll hit tab. And obviously, since it already worked before, I can be pretty sure that this is also going to work. So I'm going to accept the defaults again, and we'll click Next. Now, if we selected the Web Console option at the start of this installation wizard, we'll get to see this screen where we can specify the website to use. Now, clearly, this wizard defaults to using the default website. And if you had created a different one ahead of time in IIS, you'd see that listed here. Now you could also use SSL if you like, if you have a CA and you can issue this web server with a certificate. You could also use a self-signed one if you like. But you see, if we select this and we don't have one and we click next, it's gonna tell us that we've got an error. So even if you don't have a CA, there's really no reason why you couldn't use a self-signed certificate as it's pretty easy. Don't shy away from certificates. Let me show you how to do that real quick, why not? All right, let's click Start and open up Server Manager. And we'll go to Tools. And we'll open up the IIS console. Now over on the left, we're going to select our server, Cull MS01. And if I can find it, we'll choose Server Certificates. Now over on the right, we're going to choose to create a self-signed certificate. So let's give it a friendly name. I'll call it SCOM Web Console Self Signed Cert. That sounds friendly enough. I'll pop it in the personal store and click OK. All right. Now what we need to do is on the left hand side here, expand our sites, choose our default website. Over on the right, we'll choose bindings. Now, obviously, we're only supporting HTTP traffic at the moment, so we're going to click the Add button. From this drop-down window, we'll choose HTTPS. And from the drop-down window here, we'll choose our self-signed certificate we just created. We'll click OK. We'll click Close. And now, let's just minimize this and go back here to our SCOM installation wizard and click Next. And this time, no error. All right, so that's pretty easy. Okay, so next for our web console, we're going to leave the default to use mixed mode authentication. We'll click next. All right, now here is where we finally get to use all those accounts we created way back in an earlier video. So we've got to configure our management server action account, the DAS account, and the two 
data warehouse account. So hopefully I can remember what I created back in those videos. So the first one is going to be our server action account. So we need to enter in the domain, which is column. And the account was SCOMAA, if my memory serves correct. And then the password. I'm not sure I spelled that correctly though, so I'm gonna do that again. Okay, looks a bit better. Uh, now for our DAS account. Same deal. Our domain, S-COM DAS, I think that one was. And finally, the data reader account. And the last one, which is the writer account. Now, hopefully I've entered all this in correctly, but it's okay. If I make a mistake with any of these accounts or any of these passwords, this screen is going to return an error. And oh, if you didn't make those first two accounts, these first two accounts are a member of the local administrators group like we did earlier, then these accounts are going to fail validation. So we'll click next. And we've just got a screen here telling us about our diagnostic and usage data. But do take note of this screen though, because ordinarily with most Microsoft products, you opt in to sending diagnostic data to Microsoft. In SCOM 2016, it's on by default and you'll have to turn it off elsewhere. So we've got nothing to do here. We'll just click next. Will we use Microsoft Update? No, not for this lab. If you're using SCOM, then you're probably using SCCM for patching anyway. Let's click next. All right, that's it. We're ready to roll. Now, as you might expect, yes, I do have a silent installation version of this exact build that I could show you. And relax, I will. But let's run through this manual installation just so you can see what happens and we'll save the scripted installation for our second management server, which we can build in the next video. So let's click install and off it goes. Now, it will take a while as you might expect. So I'm obviously gonna pause the video have a cup of coffee and come back once it's done. Okay, it's done. We now have a successful installation of SCOM. Now, obviously you can see a warning here telling us that we do need to license the product by installing our product key, but we can do that in another video. For now, we're done. So in this video, we've installed Ops Manager 2016. We've opened the firewall ports, we've added the right accounts to the local administrators group, we've installed a whole lot of prerequisites, and finally we installed SCOM itself. We've installed the console, the web console, and even used a self-signed certificate to support SSL. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Congratulations on having SCOM installed, and I'd like to thank you for watching.